Welcome back, all you uranium bugs. Um, no, seriously, this is the first time visiting my channel. Welcome. This is Greg Sildman, longtime chief investment officer. Uh, I do a series called Come Learn With Me, where we look through articles that you all have liked, shared, etc., uh, on my platforms. And uh, in particular, we are focused on Come Learn With Me, a subsection called Come Learn With Me, the uranium section. Uh, we were around in 2004, five, six, seven, where we participated in, let's call it Uranium Boom One. And our research department has told us that uh, the fundamentals are looking strong for a Uranium 2.0 uh, bull market. So we're learning about that. Come learn with me. We've got a lot of videos in the channel, which I hope you'll subscribe to. It's free. Um, and you can learn about investing in uranium, which is kind of arcane, but kind of interesting. Uh, if you stick around to the end of this article, I'll tell you how we are investing in the space and how you can get more information. But enough said, guys. Well, let's dive in and learn about smashing atoms, the history of uranium and nuclear power. Uh, this is a uh, different but interesting article. The Visual Capital Capitalist, excuse me, um, does a lot of kind of, uh, what do they call them? Um, info blogs, I think they're called, or something along those lines. So we'll skip through, and there's a little bit of text below, but let's have a quick look at the smashing atoms, the history of uranium and nuclear power. The transition to clean energy requires sustainable and zero carbon energy sources. Nuclear power offers a clean energy solution powered by uranium. They don't mention the radioactive waste, but uh, we'll get to that. How did uranium come to be? Let's see, timeline. Martin Klaproth discovers uranium by isolating uranium oxide from a mineral called pitchblende, now known as urana uranianite, uranianite. Back in 1789, wow, 1800s, uh, the use of uranium to tint glass and ceramics, 1895. Wilhelm Röntgen accidentally discovers x-rays, highlighting their medical potential. That's supposed to be an X-ray, I guess. Henry Becquerel discovers alpha and beta rays, types of radiation, 1896, 1898. Mary and Pierre Curie discover the element radium and polonium. 1905, Albert Einstein puts forward a theory relating mass and energy, where energy equals mass times the speed of light squared, e equals mc squared. 32, James Chadwick discovers the neutron, an important component of nuclear fission. Otto Hahn and Fritz Strassmann discover nuclear fission, proving Einstein's theory in 1938, a long time ago. 39, the fission of uranium can cause a chain reaction and patent the production of nuclear energy. Okay, you guys can go through the graphics. I'm gonna get to the text down below pretty quick just to get into the meat of the article. The Manhattan Project, remember that? 42 to 45 builds the world's first atomic bomb. 51 experimental breeder reactor one, EVR one, generates the first electricity created by nuclear power. Source Cameco, which is the largest uranium miner in the world. Power of the atom, there are three notable properties of uranium. It's extremely dense. Uranium is one of the densest metals on Earth with the density of 19.1 grams per centimeter cubed, the same size you contain uranium would weigh around 150 pounds, wow, as a gallon of milk, which is eight pounds, okay, very, very dense, abundant, 37 times more abundant than silver, 700 times more abundant than gold, I wonder if uranium can be found in space on asteroids, that's an interesting one to look to research, energy density, uranium is extremely energy dense, one uranium pellet, the size of a gummy bear, okay, which is a half an inch, has energy equivalent to 120 gallons of oil, one ton of coal, 17,000 cubic feet of natural gas. Argonne National Laboratory, it's very nice. Uranium's high energy density makes nuclear power more efficient than other clean energy. One typical nuclear reactor, one square mile of land, 431 wind turbines, 3.1 million photovoltaic solar panels. Nuclear power is cleaner. Okay. 
our prediction, just so you know, because everyone's going to laugh at me for saying this, is we will eventually put nu nuclear waste into rockets and shoot them beyond the Earth's orbit. That's how we're going to get rid of the stuff. Maybe SpaceX will do it for us. But you can laugh. Come back and tell me about the crazy South African event you, who told you this. Supply and demand. Okay, again, you guys can go through this yourself. Australia. Olympic Dam is the world's single largest known deposit of uranium. And of course, Kazakh, uh, Uzbekistan or Kazakhstan accounted for 41% of production in 2020. Some in Namibia, Niger, Canada, Russia, China. Hmm. Okay. All right. Top 10 countries for uranium consumption. US, interesting. France or France. France is a, a big uh, nuclear fleet. India, Japan, Russia, China, very interesting. The future of uranium. Yes, we know the world needs clean electricity, global energy consumption. What are uncovered requirements? The amount of uranium required by utilities to operate the fleet that is not yet covered by supply contracts. Non US. Okay, so 74% is, is mined per year, which means there's, what, 26% deficit per year. Okay. And full disclosure that this uh, um, image was sponsored by Sprott Physical Uranium Trust. So that's the visual catalyst. All right, let's dive into, I guess this is the narration. Uran the history of uranium. Uranium has been around for millennia, but we only re recently began to understand its unique properties. Today, the radioactive metal fuels hundreds of nuclear reactors, enabling carbon-free energy generation across the globe. But how did uranium and nuclear power come to be? The above infographic, that was the word I was looking for, from the Sprott Physical Uranium Trust, outlines the history of nuclear energy and highlights the role of uranium in producing clean energy. From discovery to fission, uncovering. Right. Just like all matter, the history of uranium and nuclear energy can be traced back to the atom. Martin Klabroth, the German chemist, first discovered uranium in 1789, that's a long time ago, by extracting it from a mineral called pitchblende. He named uranium after the newly discovered granite Uranus. 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 Uh, but the history of nuclear power really began in 1895 when German engineer Wilhelm Röntgen discovered X-rays and radiation, kicking off a series of experiments and discoveries, including that of radioactivity. In 1905, Albert Einstein set the stage for nuclear power with his famous theory relating mass and energy. We've got to give him props, Albert Einstein. Uh, roughly 35 years later, Otto Hahn and Fritz Strassmann confirmed his theory by firing neutrons into uranium atoms, which yielded elements lighter than uranium. According to Einstein's theory, the mass lost during the reaction changed into energy. This demonstrated that fission, fission, the splitting of one atom into lighter elements had occurred. Interesting. Nuclear energy is incomparably greater than the molecular energy which we use today in Winston Churchill. Following the discovery of fission, scientists worked to develop a self-sustaining nuclear chain reaction. In 1939, a team of French scientists led by Frédéric joilat curie demonstrated that fission can cause a chain reaction and full, filed the first patents on nuclear reactors. Later in 1942, a group of scientists led by Enrico Fermi and Leo Cislard, sorry Leo, for pronouncing your name, settled the first nuclear chain reaction through the Chicago Pile 1. Interestingly, they built this makeshift reactor using graphite bricks on the abandoned squash court in the University of Chicago. Okay. These experiments proved that uranium could produce energy through fission. However, the first peaceful use of nuclear fission did not come until 1951, when experimental breeder reactor 1 in Idaho generated the first electricity source from nuclear power. The power of the atom, nuclear power, nuclear power and clean energy. Nuclear reactors harness uranium's properties to generate energy without any greenhouse gas emissions. While uranium's radioactivity makes it unique, it has three other properties that stand out. Material density, okay, we've been through that. Abundance, energy density. 
we've gone through all that in the infographic about thanks to its well my editor is going to say why didn't you highlight okay thanks to its high energy density the use of uranium fuel makes nuclear power more efficient than other energy sources this includes renewables like wind solar which typically require much more land to generate the same amount of electricity as a single nuclear reactor but nuclear power offers more than just a small land footprint. It's also one of the cleanest and most reliable sources of energy sources available today, poised to play a major role in the energy transition. So we're definitely going to say it's, I don't know if it's the cleanest, um, but definitely most reliable, known as base load, as in when it's turned on, it doesn't turn off. Although nuclear power is often left out of the clean energy conversation, the ongoing energy crisis has brought it back into focus. Several countries are going nuclear in a bid to reduce reliance on fossil fuels while building reliable energy grids. For example, nuclear power is expected to play a prominent role in the UK's plan to reach net zero carbon emissions by 2050. Furthermore, Japan recently approved restarts of three of its nuclear reactors after initially phasing out nuclear power following the Fukushima accident. The resurgence of nuclear power in addition to reactors that are already under construction will likely lead to higher demand for uranium especially as the world embraces clean energy. Well, there you have it, folks. I just want to go back to one point, which I found very interesting, where they spoke about um, the, uh, where is it? According to ISR theory, the mass lost during the reaction changed into energy. Okay, so uranium is very dense, and by firing, uh, by firing neutrons into uranium atoms, which yielded elements lighter than uranium. So you fire neutrons into the uranium and the mass lost by the uranium converts to energy and a lot of energy in there, all right? We're learning, we're learning. So I hope you enjoyed that come learn with me session, guys. Uh, you know, we certainly believe in the resurrection of, well, in the uh, expansion of nuclear power. We believe we're into another uranium boom market. Early days yet, and uh, we'll see uh, how that goes, but it was spectacular in the early 2000s and hoping for uh, equally spectacular gains for us and our investors. If you'd like to learn how we invest, we invest in private market uh, solutions. We're not really into public markets. We are building companies that will exit through IPOs into public markets. Uh, come. Uh, Register with us at our investment site. The URL is put there in front of you. And you can learn more about our program. Uh, and we can meet and talk. And um, unfortunately, for private market investors, we need you to be accredited. Come over to our website, learn what accreditation is. You'll have to register. But uh, anyway, that's not my rules. That's uh, the SEC's rules. So we follow them diligently. And I hope you will come and join us as we seek to profit for ourselves and our clients and everyone who joins us in the next uranium bull market. Once again, thanks very much for joining me. Uh, subscribe to our uh, channel. We've got other very interesting uh, videos. I found them interesting. Come learn with me and uh, hope to see you soon. Greg Sildman, CIO, out for now.